Now that we have our pivot table set up, we're ready to go ahead and start moving some things around and seeing if we can make the information more meaningful. In this case, let's take a look at our column labels up here, which are dates. And since we're just showing individual dates, which based on our source data doesn't really tell us a lot, there's only one entry per associate per day, uh, let's take a look at how we could group that and make it more meaningful. In this case, let's try and do by month. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click on one of the column labels. And you notice that when I click on the column label, or if I click anywhere within my pivot table, I get a contextual set of tabs. So I get two contextual tabs. One is options, the other is design, and they're under the header of pivot table tools. Uh, if those ever disappear, uh, you say you click off of it, you just need to click back within the pivot table to bring them back. So now that I have my column label highlighted, I'm going to come up here to the options tab. And then I'm going to come over and choose group field. And group field is within the group section of the ribbon. And I'll see group field. And you see I have several options that are already predefined. Now I can tell it a starting and an ending date if I wanted to. Uh, maybe I want to start this as of January uh, 15th for some reason, or maybe July 1st to start over at the second half of the year. Whatever it might be, I can change the starting and ending dates. Um, then I come down here and I can choose one of these predefined categories. And I'm just going to do by months. And you can tell it's highlighted when it's dark. If it's just blank like this, you can see my OK button's gone uh, because nothing is highlighted. I'm going to choose months and say OK. And just as easy as that, I just clicked on group field, clicked on months, and said OK. Now I have it grouped by month. What this is showing me is the number of files processed by Chelsea, so the number of files that she processed in the month of January. And you can see I've got the same information for Diane, Jerome, Jorge, and so on. And it also totaled those for February, March, all the way through my data. And you can see it's even providing me with some grand totals here. So just as quickly as that, I just came over here to my source data, which was essentially meaningless to me. And instead of having to make a whole bunch of formulas that would calculate the uh, totals and subtotals and all of that, instead of having to use all those complex formulas, I just clicked within this, inserted a pivot table, organized my information very quickly and easily, and then I clicked on group field and that grouped it for me. So that's how we can group uh, by month. Now let's take a look if we wanted to change that. If you notice, there were some other options in there. So if you notice my group field option is grayed out, that's because I need to select my column header for that to come back. Now I have that type of field highlighted and I'll click on group field. And instead of by months, I'm gonna click on quarters instead. Now you can see actually both of these are gray and that's because we are able to use multiple at the same time. Uh, in this case, though, I'm going to undo the months one, and I'm just going to do quarters to show that to you, and then we can try some multiple ones. And I'll click on OK. And now it just uh, summarized by quarter. So it gave me these totals. And remember from our values section over here, we have sum, so we know that it's adding it up. So this is the total number of files Chelsea processed in quarter one. So finally, if we wanted to do it by month and quarter, well, we just saw that we could do, I'm going to come up here to Group Fields, and I am going to go ahead and select Months again. Now I've got both of them highlighted, and I click OK. And you can see that Excel is smart enough to go ahead and handle that automatically. So it's got quarter one divided out, January, February, March, quarter two, April, May, and June. And if I use these twisties up here to collapse it, now it's just showing me the totals by quarter one, but it still shows quarter two by month. Maybe that would be important in a report you were giving to someone if they just wanted to know the total from quarter one, but they wanted more detail for quarter two, uh, things like that. So you can see it's very easy to move this around. I can make it look the way I want, and then I can print it or share it with someone else. So that's just the basics of how we can group by uh, the date field. And we'll take a look at how we can do some other things here in just a minute in the next video.